we have collisions in sports? You bet. Every Sunday afternoon when you watch uh, football players, one of the main things you'll notice is their heads. They, they b collide into each other very, very fast. They have a lot of momentum. They're big people. They move fast. And when they collide, they hit hard. Let's think about how their bodies are protected from some of those collisions. Common collisions are to see uh, uh, football players just hitting each other, into each other with their helmets. We tend to think that helmets are protective because they have a hard outer cover. And to some extent, that is protective. But the real protection for your head occurs more inside the helmet. Think about what's inside a helmet of any kind. Here I have a child's bicycle helmet, a very important piece of equipment for any young person. The inside of the helmet has a great deal of padding inside it so that if a collision occurs, the outer rigid structure of the helmet is protective and allows the helmet itself not to break, but that inner padding causes any kind of force to be stretched out over a long period of time, just like the egg in the sheet, and causes the actual force on your head to be a great deal less, so that what could be a very severe collision now becomes a very mild, uh, man, uh, mild bump. Motorcycle helmets, very important piece of equipment and are required by many states. Again, have a hard outer construction. This is to keep the helmet itself from breaking. The real protection for your head is in this inner padding. This helmet has a great deal of very, very soft, very thick padding. Again, this stretches any kind of collision, any kind of force out over a fairly long period of time, and again, making the force a good bit less. Padding occurs not only in helmets. Uh, think about football players or, or rugby players or any kind of contact sports. Think of their shoulder padding, knee pads. These are all things which protect um, our bodies, our bones from breaking. Think about baseball. Outfielders wear mitts. Catchers wear mitts. What is the purpose of the mitt? Well, yes, it does give you a bigger area for the ball to uh, fall into or to be caught into. That's not the real purpose of the mitt. Mitts are padded. We were talking about a baseball pitcher in the major leagues being able to pitch between 90 and 100 miles an hour. The catcher is catching that ball, going at a very, very fast speed. The ball, even though it's light, has a tremendous amount of momentum because of its velocity. If the catcher were to try to catch that ball in his hand, it could do severe damage to his hand. It could probably break the bones in his hand. So the catchers, if you'll think about it, wear a great deal of protection. They have facial protection, chest protectors, knee protectors, all padding. Their gloves, too, are heavily padded. Again, when they catch that ball, it not only rolls because of the shape of the glove and the shape of the mitt, but it is padded to stretch that force out of, over a long period of time, making the force less. Outfielders are similar. They don't wear the uh, protective chest and knee padding, but they too have gloves that are heavily padded. Think too about how an outfielder catches a ball. Even with a padded glove, they don't just stick up their hands stiffly and, and catch the ball like that. Rather, they go back with the motion of the ball. So they have two things protecting their hands. They have the ball hitting the mitt and moving down through the mitt, through the padding, again increasing the time, but the very motion of their arm going backwards causes the time of that impact and that momentum transfer to be uh, quite a bit greater and therefore reducing the force on their hand, reducing the force on the glove. So these kinds of things in sports are all designed to reduce force, to keep us safe. 